What's up hobby friends, my name is Casey and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today, we're going to tackle the Mighty Gorgon. Excuse me, your intro is, um, it's entirely too long. This is where I get to do the, the funny bits. It's it too long. You know, you can fast forward it. It's okay. Just fix it. It's not funny. So a while back, I picked up this amazing Gorgon model off of eBay. He's in pretty rough shape, and I'm pretty sure he's missing pieces. But he's such a seriously cool model that I just had to get him. Let's start with the larger issues. There are insane gaps in this build. I'm talking almost a quarter inch wide in some places. And in order to fix that, I mixed up a bunch of Milliput. Milliput is a two-part putty that sticks and bonds to things like plastic and wood. It's great for fixing leaks in boats and for gaps on your models. There were also a ton of mold lines that needed to be cleaned up with a hobby knife. Once all the gaps were filled and the mold lines removed, I primed the whole thing using Steinores Black Primer. After that, I moved on to regular painting, beginning with Chaos Black. The all over coat of Chaos Black is just a precaution. If any of this black is showing and I need to touch up the model, I can use Chaos Black instead of the primer to do that. Try and keep that in mind if you plan on using a lot of black in your model. Don't just ride with the primer because more often than not you won't have a black that matches and most primers are kind of tough to brush on. Next up I grab some Zerius purple for the shadows. This will be applied through the airbrush from below. I want to catch the undersides of all of the detail. That way when we shoot lighter and brighter colors from above, we'll have a nice mix of black and purple in the shadows. Coming in with Liquitex Titanium White, I'm going to shoot this from the top down and create a kind of road map for highlights. And it's going to set up a really good filter. The white will grab onto any of the raised details, leaving the black and purple in the shadows, and give me an idea where the brightest parts of the model are. Or where they're supposed to be. Cygor Brown Contrast Paint through the airbrush is going to be our filter color for the white. I'm going to be working my way up to much brighter and different colors, but I really want the skin to have quite a lot of variety, so brown will be a pretty good place to start. Vallejo Earth is a nice lighter brown that will be perfect for layering over the darker brown. Still shooting from the top down, I'm going to slowly build up the opacity of this color in areas that need to be brighter. The transparency of this paint through the airbrush will allow a pretty good variety of highlights on the skin. Vallejo Dwarf Skin will help bring in some flesh tones and give us an even brighter highlight and variety for this guy's skin.
After that, I'm going to go back to the white ink and lay down some highlights in some of the smaller areas. Just to give me that roadmap back a little bit and set up the armbands for a layer of contrast. Just a heads up, if you use white ink as a base for contrast paints, let it dry for quite a while before applying your paint or it'll just tear that ink right off. Alternatively, after it's dry to the touch, varnish it for protection. Once this ink is dry, Flesh Terror's Red will be a great base coat for the cloth and wraps. I really like this color. It's super strong in pigment and covers really well even over black. Using Reichland Flesh Shade and Druki Violet, I'm going to give the skin a pretty heavy wash. When you're mixing two washes together on a model, you need to work pretty fast. Lay down a good amount of one color and then blend the other color on the model where they meet. It's pretty much like a poor man's version of wet blending, but the results can be really fantastic. This is going to make a mess of the model, but not to worry, there is a great way to take care of this when the wash is dry. After that, I'm going to use Screaming Skull to layer over all of the bone and skulls on the model. And there are a ton of them on this guy, and I kept having to come back because I forgot one. Just so many skulls. For the metallics, I'm going with Vallejo Metal Color Dark Aluminum. It's pretty much like Lead Belcher, but it goes on really smooth. Now that all that wash is dry, we can start to blend the skin using the airbrush. I'm going to go back to dwarf skin and lightly go over all of the areas where this color was at its brightest before. Feathering the airbrush and doing really thin coats will blend the colors together and give us a really nice highlight for the skin. This is by far the most satisfying part of this process. It makes the skin really come together and it gets rid of any kind of weird, harsh coffee staining from the wash.
In order to highlight the red on the model, I reached for some leftovers on my wet palette. I'm pretty sure it's Mephiston red and probably corn red. Either way, it's a little bit brighter and more saturated than the contrast paint. So grabbing a little bit on my brush, I'm just gonna layer over all of the red. With Cadian Flesh Tone, I'm going to stipple and edge highlight all of the red in order to bring out some texture. I really like using lighter flesh tones for red. It's pink, kind of, but it doesn't really read like a pink highlight if you were to mix red and white together. It works really well for pretty much any kind of leather, brown or red. I started to highlight the skin using Kislev Flesh, and that was going really well. Watering it down into a glaze and going over the model bit by bit. This part was pretty time consuming, and there were a lot of areas on the model that needed a little boost. So I tried to take my time and hit them all. Seraphim Sepia for all of the bones. This will give us the old bone color and get the wash into all of the recesses. I fell out of my mind. Got too close, can't deny. After the wash was dry, it came back in with Screaming Skull and layered that over the top. Keeping the paint thin and moving it pretty quickly will get you a good result for bone. Contrast Black Templar will be a perfect choice for the hair on this model. Since this paint is pretty much a super thick wash, it will color the hair and blend the edges with our other paint. After it's dry, we'll do a dry brush of Eschen Gray to finish it off. I did take the model back to my airbrush booth in order to darken down the base a little bit. I also took the opportunity to spray the horn tips with burnt umber and carbon black. Nothing too special, but I thought it made the horns look extra menacing. This model was really interesting to paint, and it took a bit of a turn for me around the halfway point. At first, I didn't think much of it. It's a cool model, but when I started to do the glazing on the skin, I realized that I could legitimately paint this for another 20 hours. I was really getting into the highlighting and the texturing on the skin. Every little wrinkle and spot was an opportunity to do something really fun, and I couldn't help but keep going. I spent several hours just doing that before forcing myself to move on. After all, this video has to come out at some point. Also, this model will be going back up on eBay, so if you would like to support the channel and get yourself a super cool Gorgon, the link is in the description below. I can't thank you all enough for the support. It truly means a lot to me, and it really helps the channel keep going each week. Like I said, this model was really fun to paint. I had a really good time, and I think he turned out really great. I was excited to spend the time I did with him, and maybe I'll be able to paint another one in the future, if I ever get to that Beastman army. 
but every model has to be called done at one point or another. So here is the mighty Gorgon. Thank you once again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.